Okay, so welcome back to part 9 of this video tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to, how to add the content to the default page. So let's get straight into it. So if we open up our design, and if we go to our default page, as you can see, it shows us the content from the master page. So the first thing we need to do, if we go to our master page, and if we come down to the section, the main content wrapper, main content, and in here, we want to add... Uh, something called a content placeholder so to save a bit of time I'm just going to copy and paste this in and just tidy this up a bit okay so we've added this content placeholder into the master page and we've given it an ID of main content placeholder so if we just save the master page and if we go to the default page and go to the source view as you can see there's not a lot on this page at the moment so what we need to do is we need to add some code in here as well so the code that we need to add just below is here if we just paste that into there and finish closing the tag okay so this code here will now reference that content placeholder uh, piece of code we added into the master page and the way it does that it uses this ID here so main content placeholder if we just go back to the master page we gave the content placeholder here the ID of main content placeholder okay so the way this is going to work is any code we put in between the ASP content tag here and the closing tag will only show up on the default page but will have all of the content from the master page surrounding it so if we if I just paste in this bit of code which gives a couple of line breaks and there's a h1 tag with the word hello world so if we save that go to design view and as you can see this is the main content placeholder that we added so it's only this area that we can add, add uh, code into and as you can see it says hello world and you've got all the surrounding content from the master page uh, you may notice when you hover over the content of the master page it doesn't allow it to be editable um, so obviously if you need to edit that code you have to go back to the master page and edit it there so if we just remove the hello world for now uh, save the page. There's a, a couple of things that we need to do to the style sheet. Is first of all we need to add something called clear. So if we go back to our style sheet, go up to the very top, and if we just add here a, a class which starts with a dot, and we're going to add clear both. And then we're going to add the clear colon both property. I'll explain what that does later on. Also, if we come down on the main content, on this main content section here, you want to remove the minimum height because we don't need that anymore. If you just remove that, I removed that earlier on, so if you just take that out. Okay, and the next thing we want to do, if we go to our master page, we're going to want to add in between the closing main content and the closing main content wrapper in the middle, we want to add a div with a class equal to clear both, which we just added, which we just added to the style sheet, and save that. What this clear both property actually does, if we go back to, if we go to our default page, when we were building up the the, the billboard area we had to float this main image to the left and some of the text to the right uh, so what we need to do we need to basically stop that from inheriting down so by adding in the adding in the clear both basically stops that and the flow of the document returns to what it should be I'll show you the impact of what the uh, clear both property does later on when we get to the portion of the site Okay, so if we just pull up our Photoshop design, and as you can see, um, it's basically split into half. So you've got from the blog, you've got this side, and then you've got the watch our product demo on the right-hand side. So the best way to tackle this would be to create one big div, and then in, the, in that div, create two divs and then split it in half. So you have a left side and a right side. So if we just go to our code, and obviously, we're going to be creating this on the default page so first of all we need to do div id 
and it's going to be main content area. Okay, so if we close that off like so. Okay, so if we just add some space in here, just bring it in a little. Okay, so inside of the main content area, we're going to create our first side. So we're going to call this div id. Oh. main left so if we just close that and then we're also going to create a right as well so if we just copy and paste the main left and then change that to main right okay so the next thing we need to do is actually create the CSS for all of this so if we jump over to the style sheet so if we put it underneath the, the the main content, so our first one, if we just go back so we don't get any spelling mistakes, if we, so it's main content area, so if we copy that. So we want to give this a width of 100%, so it stretches all the way across. We want to give it a height of auto. And then we need to give it margin top of 100 pixels. The the reason for that is we need to basically pad, we don't want the text to be underneath this image here. So as you can see, that's now pushed the, the main content placeholder down. So if we go back to the style sheet, so that's that sorted. And um, we want to create a main left div and in this we're going to give this a width of 500 pixels because our total width is a thousand give it a height of auto so it stretches with the content and we want to float it to the left And then we want to do the same for the, the main right. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in. So again, it's a width of five, 500 pixels. The height is auto. And we're going to float that to the right so they'll line up against each other. So if we just save that. OK, so now we've created these styles for the main content area. The main left and the main right. So we need to put some content inside of them. So if we go to main left, just create a bit of space. So inside of the main left, if we go to our Photoshop document, it's going to be this portion here. Now to save a bit of time, I've actually created the code, um, so it doesn't take up too much time in the video. So what I'll do is I'll copy and paste the code in, uh, and then explain what it does as we go through. So what I'll do, I'll just copy and paste in the code. Okay, so I've now pasted in the code for the main left section. And as you can see, the first uh, tag we have is a H6. So if we just go to the style sheet, and what you need to add in is just underneath the main left is main left H6, and it's going to give it a color of this sort of dark gray, a font size of 14, and margin top, margin bottom, sorry, of 20 pixels. So if we just go back to the design view, and as you can see, that's the code that it's um, targeting right here. So if we just go back to the source view, uh, the next thing I've actually done is created an unordered list, and in that unordered list there's list items. So inside of the list items there's an image, there's a H6 tag, and there's a paragraph tag. Also a class of clear both, and I'll show you what that does in a second. So if we basically go over to our style sheet. So what I'm going to do now is just paste in the code for that unordered list. Okay, so first of all, this is where it starts. <clears throat> so it starts main content area, main left. That needs to be a capital. 
let me just if I just quickly change these to capitals okay so main content area main left an ordered list list item so I'm telling that to take off the the bullet on the image and give it margin bottom of 30 so if we just preview this and as you can see it's changed quite a lot if I just remove this list style none just to show you what it actually does as you can see now it's added these little dots next to the list items so if I put that back in so list style none it now removes those for you okay and then if we come down again so we've got main content area main left unordered list image so this is targeting this image here so UL LI image and that's going to float it to the left and then underneath the image we have the H6 tag so that's here so main content area main left in order this list item H6 give it a color of this gray font size of 13 uh, and some margin so top right bottom and left and then float that to the left as well so it lines up next to the image and then we've got this clear both property here so we're using that to clear down the floats so the document flow returns back to normal so this paragraph doesn't float up next to the H6 it stays underneath where it should be and then we've got the main content area main left UL LI and P so the paragraph tag give it this color font size of 11 and give it some margin so if we just look at that in design view and as you can see they all line up next to each other in a browser that will look correct if we just show that now so if we just open that up in the browser and as you can see it lines up perfectly next to the to the image uh, one thing I haven't shown you is how to create that image so if we just come out of here and do stop debugging if we go to our Photoshop design and zoom in the easiest way to do this is make sure you've got the auto select on click on the actual image itself and as you can see it jumps straight to that layer so if you hold down the alt key it will hide all the other layers apart from the one you clicked on and if you click on the one above to get the text for June and then just crop it straight out and save it as whatever you like so once you've done that you then head back over to if you just head back over to Visual Web Developer and as you can see over here I've created the button called June button and just saved it in my structure folder and then that gets added as I said before as the image in the list item so just underneath list item you add the image and then to control that image we use this code here to float it to the left and then as you can see it all it all looks like it does in our Photoshop design if we just go back just zoom out a little and as you can see we've got from the blog and we've got everything here I'm not going to create the individual March and April but you can if you want it's just the same process of cropping that out of the document okay so it looks like I'm running out of time and um, so what I'll do I'll uh, create another another video straight after this one and get it uploaded for you uh, if you can please rate comment and subscribe to my channel uh, that's always appreciated cheers